Hey everyone and welcome back to Just Finished Coding. I'm Sri Ram and this video is part 8 of the Pac-Man game dev series where we recreate the famous arcade game on scratch. If you haven't watched parts 1 to 7, then click on the card up here. Now before we go on, I want to mention right away that part 8, which is this video, is by far the hardest and most challenging to program. The reason for this is not that our code is more difficult per se, rather there are so many minute things that have to be changed and it's so easy to mess something up and run into a lot of problems. For that reason, what I would recommend is to go to the downloadable files link in the description box below and download the file called part 8. Do not follow me along step by step as I explain what I'm doing because it is very likely that you will make a mistake somewhere and end up with some very strange bugs. Instead, watch the whole video, listen to my explanations so that you are clear with the logic of the program. Okay, so in this video, we will use all of the code of the red ghost and extend it to three more ghosts that will roam about the screen and follow the Pac-Man in the same manner. This may seem like a piece of cake, but I assure you it is not. Start off with the red ghost, creating a variable called prison value red. Set this to be 20. Now create the same variable except for the pink ghost, the blue one, and the yellow one. Good. Next, create a variable called prison tick red. And similarly, this must also be done for the pink, blue and yellow ghosts. Once the game starts, prison tick will keep incrementing for each of the ghosts. Once it reaches a certain threshold, that is prison value, we will let the ghost exit the prison that it is in. So different ghosts will have different prison values depending on how long we'd want them to stay in the prison. To simplify the code, we'll create a block called out of prison code. This will represent everything we've programmed so far in the main game loop. We'll move this to the side because we do need space to work on the other cases, that is, while the ghost is still in the prison. First case will be when prison tick is greater than prison value. Here we can just use the block that we just created. In the second equality case, go to tile x9 and tile y9. This will be the center of the board. For the last case, we'll create a block called move random in prison. We can run this in the last case, which is when prison tick is less than prison value. Before defining the block, we can just increment prison tick by one so that it keeps increasing. Okay, now we have to move the block to the side to define it. But before that, we must also go to the out of prison code block and set the prison tick value to be zero because, well, at this point, the ghost should get back into prison. Pretty simple and let's move on. We can fix one of the bugs from the follow path blocks. Check if game mode is frightened and if item one of ghost deaths is zero. If this is met, then switch the costume to be frightened and after this, we can use the same blocks as earlier. This way, the costume will switch to frightened rather than remaining as the red ghost. Clean up and the same thing has to be done for the other follow block. We can keep a copy and reuse this in the move random in prison block, just changing it to an if else. In the second case, just switch the costume to red. We will now configure four possibilities using the mod operator. If the remainder on dividing by four is zero, then repeat five, changing x by one each time. If the remainder is one, then change x by negative one. If the remainder is two, keep the same code. And lastly, change x by one. This will lead to the red ghost slowly moving left and right along the center tile, much like the actual Pac-Man game. Nice, now onward to the grid to create separate lists for each of the other ghosts. These can be called grid, followed by whatever the ghost color is. That could be pink, blue, and yellow. In addition to the grid itself, there are also indices 
which contain the tile numbers of the four tiles. So we need the new list for those as well. The same process can be followed with indices followed by pink, yellow and blue. In addition to deleting the items of the red grid at the start, we will also delete the other grid elements as well. Fairly simple and now for adding stuff to the list. We can follow the same blueprint as the red grid for the walls. So add a hash each instance where the sprite is touching the level and a blank when it is not. Bit repetitive but that's the way it goes. Okay, so the meat of the video, actually duplicating the ghosts. Duplicate three times and move them to the side to neatly structure them. We need to rename each of these to their respective colors and while for the moment they are identical, they soon will not be. Now the specific changes. This will be using the list grid pink. Then the coordinates will all be done using the indices pink list. For the current index, we haven't made new variables, so we need three more of them, namely for the pink, blue, and yellow indices. Now that's done, and we can change each of these lists to be indices pink. Next, change the item to item two of ghost deaths, because this refers to the pink ghost. Scroll to the right and change the prison value to refer to the pink ghost, and then change the costume as well. Okay, now change the prison tick variable both initially and also in every single condition that we have created. We have to make sure that we don't forget the increment as well. Okay, do the side now, change item one to item two and also replace it accordingly. Change red tick to pink and the costume as well. If we scroll down, there are two more cases to replace. The messages must be changed as well to correspond to the pink ghost. For now, I'll just change the find path message, but in the next video, we will have to change the death messages as well. Now we need to scroll up and in the normal code as well as the chase code, change costume to pink. Of course, the next thing we have to do is correct the message as well. Lastly, we have the move random in prison message. Here, change the item to 2. There are a few other changes that I forgot to make here, but they aren't too big of a deal and we can easily fix them later. That's the logic behind each ghost. What we must do now is the exact same thing for the blue ghost and the yellow ghost. I'm gonna kind of fast forward this entire process because of how similar it is to what we just did. Like I mentioned at the start, most of the code in this video is very repetitive and mundane, yet a single mistake could end up ruining everything and requiring a heck load of time to find out what the mistake was. Basically, we'll be changing each list and variable from red to the corresponding color. Whenever the ghost deaths list is encountered, change the item from one to the respective case, two for pink, three for blue, and four for yellow. Lastly, we must replace all the instances of the find path for red message with a find path to blue or a find path to yellow. Now, I could have probably made this program a bit more efficient considering what a pain this process was, but a lot of these processes just have to do with limitations in Scratch itself. I wish Scratch had an option to edit the name of a variable that could have made things much quicker. Nonetheless, this would have been better done with clones, although the logic would have taken a while to iron out. This goes to show the importance of planning a project before starting it, and how it could end up saving a hell lot of time in the long run. Anyway, that's the code for the ghosts themselves. This isn't all of it because we also have to program the pathfinding scripts in the path for sprites. So we need to duplicate this sprite three times once again, and I'll rearrange them a bit and name them accordingly. The changes here are as usual very simple. Each case of red, we change to pink and we run the main code on receiving the message from the pink ghost rather than the red one. Once again, we need to make similar changes for each case of grid, but the code here is a lot more manageable than the ghosts. 
Just a few changes in each of these functions, including the find path one, and we are done for the pink ghost path finding. This is going to be repetitive again, so I will fast forward. Essentially, we just have to be careful to not forget to change anything, and we will be fine. The code itself is very elementary, and it should make sense to read even for a new outsider. Before we end, we just need to make one small correction in the stage, otherwise none of this will work. At the beginning, broadcast the find random path message for all the ghost colors. That's pink, blue, and yellow. Anyhow, that's all for this video. Like I mentioned in the start, you can just download the file from the description below and then continue from part 9. As you can see from the preview here, there are a few bugs, even with all the precautions I took, including recording this thing multiple times. Fortunately, these bugs are quite simple and easy to fix, and we will do it in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, then please make sure you leave a like, and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in part 9.